Tosi, you've uh, <coughs> made a number of changes uh, to the team. Um, it makes sense for Stephen Moore to have a rest, like you've got to buy next week, so it seems like a good bracket of uh, rest time for him. What were some of the rationale for your decision? Oh, de definitely with uh, Stephen, um, it didn't matter who we were playing this weekend. It was more based around the fact that we had the, the buy, so you can give him a really good two-week block to, to regenerate and work on and work on himself physically and, and just make sure we get him through the season playing his best football. Um, you know, made a change in the second row with um, uh, dropping Kane Douglas to the bench. Uh, you know, he's the first one to admit he didn't play, hasn't been playing his best football, and uh, so I felt it was important to try and improve the team. And um, you know, Luke Antui uh, brings a real physical presence to the to the game, and, and that's what we need through the through the mid, the, you know, the mid row, the second row uh, in the forward pack. So uh, looking forward to seeing Luke Arn step up and take his chance as a starter, um, and then also seeing how Kane responds off the bench. Um, back row, we made a change with uh, Hendrick Tui coming in to start. You know, obviously a strength of his is his ball carries, and you know, really wanted to make sure that we, you know, we played on the front foot. You know, with having Quaid and Carmichael back this weekend. You know, hopefully our our attack gets a real spark about it, and you know, having those forwards getting over that ad line will create the space that we need to to play the attacking football that we're striving to to do. And then also bringing Parisi in as uh, starting winger ahead of uh, ahead of uh, Chris Kuradrani. You know, similar sort of attributes to to Hendrick. You know, in a sense that they're both uh, very physical. They carry the ball with a lot of intensity, and um, probably the leg speed that he's got will be important considering how quick the uh, Kings, you know, back three are. Um, Marty in ahead of Reddy. What was the reason behind? Oh, listen, I don't think you, you deserve to come straight back into the starting side uh, and, and jumping ahead of, of Murphy. You know, we've, we've been there, we've talked about it, why those guys were, were dropped. Uh, and, you know, I just felt to, to bring him straight into the starting side isn't, isn't fair to anyone. Were you happy with how he first played in Club 49? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was good, you know, just just to get away from the you know the place a little bit. You go back and you you train at club and you and you get a club game into you and and just gives you a bit of a different perspective on things. And and listen, they they went back, they trained hard at their clubs. I spoke to their coaches. They were, they were all very happy with what they did back there. And then their performance, uh, you know, on the training paddock here really picked up a notch and and started to do the little things that I wanted them to do about getting better. No, just giving Hamish, uh, you know, extended go in the squad. You know, he'll go away with the Australian under 20s to the to the IRB World Cup uh, a bit later on, and and just felt it was, you know, we've obviously been impressed with what Hamish has done. Uh, you know, giving him an opportunity to, to be in the 23 uh, with Quaid there is also, you know, a really good learning tool for him, and um, you know, keen to continue his development moving forward. With uh, the Southern Kings, uh, was it good that they actually scored six tries against the Force last weekend to, to shake any complacency out of your blokes? Your oh, mate, oh, side hasn't got any cause to be complacent. Yeah, listen, we, it doesn't matter who we're playing this weekend. There's no way our team could, could even think of rocking up with complacency. Um, you know, if you watch that second half against the against the Western Force, you see how dangerous the Kings can be. You know, they're, they're very quick. They like putting uh, little kicks in behind the line and with their speed, they can chase them down and, and can turn something, you know, nothing into something. So they're very dangerous. It's a bit of commentary after last week's game that the boys were gassing that second half. Do you feel like they've got fresher legs going into Saturday? Yeah, they were. Listen, you know, absolutely no excuses. We've uh, we've had a pretty gruelling schedule. We're one of the few sides that haven't had a buy yet. Um, on top of all the travel we had, de definitely there's a fatigue factor in there. But it's it's our job as as uh, coaches and strength and conditioners to try and freshen them up and and get them to each game day as, uh, in good a condition as we can. Uh, this week we've been it's been a bit of a funny week, you know, with the the Wallabies having a you know their first big. Uh, gathering uh, post that Canberra game, so those we had 13 guys down there that only got back to the 
to training on Tuesday afternoon, and so we had a we had a pretty physical hit out Tuesday afternoon. It was a bit of uh, you know mouth guards in and and uh, shoulders in. So I was really happy with what they did on Tuesday. Uh, had yesterday off, and we've got one session today. So you know we feel we've managed them pretty well this week to get them uh, in the best best position to play. Played, uh, how's it feel to be back, mate? Yeah, mate. Look, really excited. Um, it's tough watching on from the sidelines, um, especially when you're not injured or anything like that. And you know, obviously through that red card, so it was pretty tough um, you know, going through the the past three weeks. Um, but you know, I'm so excited to be back with the boys and especially to play at home. I was gonna say, what, what have you sort of been up to the past three weeks? Have you just been keeping yourself fit or any uh, any special activities for yourself? Um, obviously, just been training pretty much every day. Um, you know, working on my body, you know, working on, on my game, um, being able to get out and play a little bit of golf as well, which has been, you know, been great, it's been fun, um, being able to sort of find something else outside of football just to try and escape for that you know, hour, two hours, um, hit a few balls and, and do something different. So that's been you know, very refreshing, but um, my love is, is playing rugby, so I'm excited to be able to get another opportunity. What have you seen? It's obviously that the boys have struggled particularly in attack um, without you. What have you seen in the last few weeks that really needs working on on that side of the ball? Um, I think that, you know, from my point of view, when I was watching the games, you know, we're, we're contesting every breakdown. You know, we're putting a lot of pressure on, on ourselves in, in defence that we didn't really have much energy to attack with. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're fatigued and you're putting in so much effort in, into the breakdowns with, you know, not too much return, um, you know, when you get the ball in your hands and you're trying to light it up and, and spark something, it's very difficult and you're getting you know, guys who are fatigued dropping the ball and I think that you know, we've got to put a little bit more emphasis on being accurate in, in defence, um, you know, staying in the line, uh, making our tackles and then just reloading and not, not wasting too much energy on um, you know, lost balls. Uh, you've seen uh, Hamish a little bit in, in the run of the, the season. What, what do you like about uh, Hamish Stewart? Or what, do you, what do you see in him uh, as, a, as a young kid? Yeah, I think, mate, like he's he's like you know most young kids these days. He's he's tough. He's he's confident. Um, you know, and like the thing that I've liked about him, you know, he's just gone about his business, gone about his work. Um, you know, each day trying to improve. Um, you know, he's he's not trying to. Um, you know, get out there and be anything he's not. He's just trying to learn and, and understand that there's a great opportunity ahead of him. Um, you know, he's got a, a bright future ahead and um, you know, I'm looking forward to you know, getting to know him a bit more and obviously play play alongside him um, you know, at some stage. Who, who kicks the, uh, who punts the ball longer? He's probably got a, a little bit of younger legs on him, so it might be all right. Uh, no, nah, but I haven't had a contest, but I'll, I'll give him the, the rights there. <laughs> From what I've heard, um, quite uh, goal kicking. How, how do you think you've been tracking on the goal kicking front? Like you know, there was a degree of rust, I suppose, coming into the season, mm. not not being a starter for quite a yep. while. Um, yeah. and, and the, the second game was better than the first game, and where do you think see your goal kicking? Yeah, spend I think. A bit of time on that? Yeah, so like obviously, like anyone who kicks goals, you, know, you get out there and you practice them after training and whatnot. And, I think that you know, a lot to do with goal kicking is is being out there and doing it regularly. Um, and you know, over the past few years, I haven't been able to you know, do that as as well as I would have liked to with you know, a few injuries, um, you know, being over in um, Toulon and, and and not starting there in, in a number of games and um, having Lee Halfpenny there in, in Toulon. Um, you know, it doesn't help that obviously. So um, you know, just being able to get out there and you know, at the start of the season, being able to you know, start and, and kick on, on a regular basis has been a you know, great confidence builder. Just being out in the stadium again, kicking in front of um, you know crowds over 10,000, stuff like that. So that's something that that comes down to kicking, just being able to do it regularly. Good. Sorry, guys. 